My name is Kate Clark and I'm studying neuroscience. Uh, this project was run jointly with, between the School of Pharmacy and Biomedical Sciences and the School of Forensic and Investigative Sciences. So chemists from the School of Forensic and Investigative Sciences produced dyes that can be used to actually stain brain tumour cells during surgery. Um, being able to stain brain tumour cells during surgery means that surgeons can actually remove more of the cancerous tissue and hopefully improve the survival time and prognosis of brain tumour patients. Uh, at the moment, survival for brain tumour patients after surgery is normally less than a year because of the amount of infiltration of cancerous cells uh, into the brain tissue that can't be reached during surgery. But uh, by uh, producing dyes that will bind to cancerous cells that could be uh, that will fluoresce under infrared light, it will improve the imaging uh, of these cells, and ho hopefully surgeons will be able to like, uh, perform surgery that's much more comprehensive. Um, so. The dyes that were produced were completely novel, so they've not been produced before. Um, so my job was to screen the dyes uh, using yeast to test them for toxicity. Now the reason we use yeast was it, it's a particularly good model for uh, mammalian cells and you can uh, do a high volume of screening, you can screen a large number of dyes and use the yeast screening to narrow down the ones you take forward to screening in uh, humans and mammals. So it's cutting down on the use of animal models um, and mammalian cells which uh, are much more expensive and time consuming to work with. Um, so what we did was, when we uh, were given the dyes, they came in a powder form and we knew nothing about them apart from their structure. So the first job was to test their solubility and see whether they were soluble in water or not. Um, some of them weren't actually soluble in water, so they had to be dissolved um, in a solvent called dimethyl sulfoxide. Having solubilised them, we put them on a, into a 96 volt plate here. Um, and we did serial dilutions of dyes and yeast culture. So we got a range of different concentrations of dye. And we did this in order to determine um, what concentration was the, the minimum toxic concentration. So the, what the concentration below the minimum toxic concentration um, is not toxic. So basically we're determining the toxicity level. Um, and knowing that sort of toxicity level uh, allowed us to compare the dyes to see which were the least toxic and therefore which were the ones, the best ones to take forward uh, for future research. Um, so we screened um, a large number of dyes and we also screened their intermediates as well. So if a dye enters a cell, the cell will, um, nine times out of ten, it will degrade that dye into its component parts. So we had to check that if the dye broke down, that it didn't produce something more toxic. Um, but our results showed, these are the intermediates here, um, that they were less toxic uh, than the dyes. So toxicity from the dyes breaking down shouldn't really be an issue. Um, so we obviously used some controls and one control we used was just yeast without the dye growing in its normal medium just to confirm uh, that the yeast grew um, in the absence of dye and then we, because we used the solvent as well we used that as a control just to check that the toxicity was due to the dye not the solvent. We also compared the dyes to acridine orange so the dyes are, um, are based on acridine orange um, which is a it's got a no, um, it's a known cytotoxic agent, it's used to stain cells. So by comparing it to acridine orange, again that gives us more information about the relative toxicity of the dye. Um, so as you can see, like OA15 and 16 were relatively non-toxic, um, but the others, OA17, 20, 21 and 27, uh, were more toxic than acridine orange. They're only toxic, uh, they're only non-toxic at really low concentrations. And that, those might be concentrations which the dye actually doesn't fluoresce. So, um, based on our research, we recommended that dyes 15 and 16 uh, should be the ones to take forward to maybe study in mammalian cells. Um, well, firstly, it's given me a um, really good experience of designing uh, and implementing a research project. Um, so, I, I was able to have hands-on experience of actually getting involved in designing the method uh, and refining the method and I've, I've written that up for future students to use. Um, it gave me a lot of experience of working in a lab um, which is really important for uh, future careers if, if I went into uh, say pharmaceutical research. Um, lab experience is really really important for that so and it gave me experience of independent working because previously uh, well, during my university work all the labs are 
uh, quite closely supervised, but I was allowed to work on my own and make my own decisions and manage my own time. So those were all really beneficial things. Well, two things I'm considering are um, one is um, doing a PhD. I hope um, there might be an opportunity. There might be opportunities to con to do a PhD and work similar to this. Um, I'd be really interested in. Uh, continuing with this or doing a, a PhD in, in some aspect of brain tumour research. Um, so it's, it's really helped me in that respect because um, obviously, uh, obviously with the lab experience and producing, um, producing a high quality post about my research, talking to people about my research, um, reading up uh, about methods, using journal literature, that, uh, that kind of thing has been really helpful. The second thing is uh, going in, working in pharmaceuticals and obviously applying for uh, jobs in that area, they really look at the lab experience you've got and your, your ability to research and work independently as well as part of the team, so it's been really good in that respect too.